Hello, so if you remember, in the last document, we created something that looks very much like this. Um, now, it's very simple, very quick and easy to do, though, uh, which simply just had the question number, the number of marks for the question, and then what the question actually was. Now, what we're going to start doing is fiddling around with this a little bit more and making this look a little bit more visually appealing. So the first thing which I don't like about this is the fact that the number of marks for the question comes first. So you've got the question number, then the number of marks, and then you read the question. I would rather that my students read the question first and then you had the number of marks sort of something like this out here over on the right hand side. So the way to do that is to come back to our code and at the end of the question, so I just simply come to the end of the first question here where I finished off this uh, polynomial, this quadratic, and I can just simply type the command. So command, so backslash, and then drop points like so. Okay, then if I click recompile, you can see that the number of marks or the number of points gets dropped over here on the right hand side. So after the question, okay, and you can see I haven't, it hasn't appeared for the second question because I need to come down here and physically type drop points again, drop points again. And then if I recompile, the number of marks for that question will also then appear on the right hand side. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, you've still got the number of points here. Uh, before the questions actually started and you're right So the simple way to change that is to come here before my questions start So I've got begin questions here and before I type my first question I'm Just going to stick a couple of lines in there. All I'm going to type is points dropped At right and if I recompile that You can see that the number of points just gets dropped over here on the right hand side and they've disappeared from before the question. Now, you notice that by doing so, what's happened is that uh, it's just turned to numbers. So it doesn't say points anymore. So perhaps I wanna customize this just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is come here to points dropped at right. And I'm gonna change this, first of all, to margin point name. Okay, so I'm just gonna type the command margin point name. I'm gonna put in some curly brackets OK, so to actually show how I want this to look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the question number comes first. So it says four here. So I'm going to leave a space and then I'm going to type the command. So I'm going to put the backslash points. Oops, points. OK, and what this does now, if I recompile. Is it will have the four and then the points again. Now. I don't actually say points, so the number of points for this question. If you're happy with points, then fine, leave it. But I personally use marks, okay? So a simple way to change that is to come up here on a new line and just simply type marks, not points, okay? And now if I recompile that, it will no longer say points, but marks instead. Now you could absolutely change this simply two marks, like physically type the word marks, and that would work. But the issue is if I change this question down here now to only have one point or one mark, and then click we recompile, can you see that it still says one mark? So in other words, it's the plural version. So for four marks, it's not an issue, but for one marks, it should be one mark. So no S, okay? So if I change that back to points, it will do it automatically for me. So you can see now it's changed this back to mark and not marks, okay? So that's the reason why I like to type the command points because it automatically takes into account the singular version and the non-singular, the plural, okay? Now, a couple more things that I can do. Um, first things first, I am going to just move this in slightly from the right-hand side of the page. I think it's a little bit too close to this margin. So all I'm gonna do is just type set length. So the command set length. OK, and I'm going to put two sets of curly brackets because I'm basically going to put two individual sets of inputs. The first is going to be taking into account the right point margin. So I'm just going to simply type right point margin, right points margin in curly brackets with the um, with the command at the front. OK, so that's that's setting the length of the right points margin. Then the second set of curly brackets is actually what I want that length to be. So. There's different ways of setting the length in LaTeX. Some people like to do it in terms of relative distance of the page length or the page, or the page width or page height. So for example, if you just want it to be 20% of the page width, okay, you can do that easily. 
The way which I like to do it is absolute distances. So defining it in terms of millimetres or centimetres. Um, so I'm going to tell it I want it to be 25 millimetres. Now if I re click recompile, you can see that it moves those points or those marks in from the right hand side by 25 millimetres. And in fact, whilst I'm at it, I'm going to change the margins because you can see I want to control the margins which are going on around the side of the page. So what I'm going to do is come up here between document class and begin document and in my preamble I'm going to use a package. So I'm going to type backslash and then use package. Okay, and packages are really useful in LaTeX. We will use more of them in future videos. Okay, but for the moment, I'm going to use the package geometry. So in my curly brackets, I'm simply going to type geometry. And what that will do is lo load predefined sets of code, and then I can control what parameters I want to change. So if you notice, I'm bringing my cursor back in between the use package and those curly brackets where I put geometry, and I'm going to put my square brackets. In the same way I did for document class, I could put my parameters in those square brackets. I'm going to do the same with use package. And all I'm going to simply do is type the distance which I want each of those margins to be. So I'm just simply going to go round. So I'm just simply going to type left and then equals, and I'm going to define how much or what the width of the left margin should be. So the left margin over here. So I'm just going to go for 12 millimetres. And you can fiddle around with these and do them for whatever you want. I'm going to go for 12 millimetres because I found that works for this particular setup and this particular template. Then I can move over to my right margin. So I type a comma. My next parameter is my right margin. And I'm going to type equals. And this one is going to be 15 millimetres. Okay, so one five millimetres. Then I'm going to do my top and bottom. So very quickly, top I'm going to do as 20 millimetres and bottom I'm going to do as 30 millimetres. Now if I recompile this, you can see that my margins will change. Okay, so can you see there that my margins are now changed? Uh, so I've got a slightly smaller left margin, slightly smaller right margin, and my top margin uh, is 20 millimetres. And you can't obviously see my bottom margin yet because I haven't used all that space in the page, but it is 30 millimetres. Now one final thing that I want to do is actually change a little bit more how these marks and these points appear. So at the moment, they appear in curly brackets. Well, let's say I don't want them to appear in curly brackets. So what I'm going to do is where I've actually changed everything about my marks, my points, so my points dropped at my uh, right, marks, not points, margin point name, etc. I'm just going to underneath type a new command, which is the point format. And this will basically give me control over how these marks will actually appear. So I'm going to open up a curly bracket. OK, and in here, I'm actually going to type how these things are going to appear. So the first things first, I want to make it bold. So I'm going to type BF series and BF series will basically turn this into bold. So if I just quickly recompile this, you can see that now they have turned. Oops. Aha, not quite. OK, so bear with me. I need to find a few more things first. Um, I need to first of all type uh, bold math as well, because I'm going to be typing a number in here, which is part of the maths package. So in the same way down here, as I had y equals 4x squared minus 5x minus plus 7, those points are actually given as a number is part of math. So I need to type it as part of bold math. OK, uh, I also want uh, straight brackets, so square brackets. So I'm going to type square brackets here, and then I'm actually going to type the margin point. OK, so I'm going to type the margin points like this. If I recompile this, effectively, this is now changed to a square bracket. So let's zoom in. This is going to change to a square bracket. The reason why it's a square bracket is because I've used square brackets here. OK, um, it's also all bold. So BF series and bold math basically changed both the number and also the text to bold. OK, and then the margin points is just simply what I've defined above. So this thing here, the margin point name. OK, if, for example, I wanted to change this to different things. So if I wanted to change it, for example, to um, curly brackets, I can totally do that. OK, if I just type curly brackets there and click recompile, you can see that over here on the right hand side, in fact, because the curly brackets are reading an input, I need to put a backslash in front of them. OK, so you put a backslash like that. And now you can see that the curly brackets have appeared over here on the right hand side. OK, so just bear that in mind, because the curly brackets are a special character that are reserved for an input. If you want to actually use them, so use the curly brackets, you have to put a backslash in front of them. OK, but I liked my square brackets, so I'm going to change those back to square brackets. You can have a fiddle around and you can change this to be however you want. 
okay? But if I now recompile, then this looks kind of quite nice. I'm happy with this, okay?